All right, guys, so next up on the list of things to do is the upper oil pan. And, well, let me just go ahead and show you. See how nice the oil pan looks? I actually paid the shop that actually decked the head when they cleaned the head. I was like, hey, I've got this huge oil pan. I don't have a parts cleaner in my house because, if, guys, if you've ever had a parts cleaner, it'll make your whole house stink. If it's attached to your garage, don't do it. It just never dealt with any parts cleaner that didn't stink. Even the sealed boxes, that it gets into the house, and we're, my wife's very finicky about smell. So they're like, oh, throw us an extra 20, and we'll clean this too. And did they not clean it? This was, like, disgusting. Like, disgusting. Now, the outside's, like, from being exposed to the elements and stuff, this has, like, uh, salt oxidation and stuff, and there's no really good way to fix that. But the inside of the pan, which didn't see, it was just coated in oil, literally looks new. There's a couple light, again, this can be coated in oil, but they got all that old crap off, so I didn't want that going fresh back into the motor. Um, the only thing we're reusing here is the pickup and the actual splash guard. So what we need to do here is, we again, need to use some FIPG, and you'll see around here, you're going to run up like this. Go just like that. Well, I'll put the camera up so you guys can watch me to make it easy too. Then there's a couple spots where you gotta double lay it, but it's pretty basic. You got some extra lines there. One thing I'll recommend, take a screwdriver, like so, and run this down in these edges right here. Get all that out you can. There's, you can see a little bit left over, and I've scraped it a ton. You might see a little residue, uh, but scrape that as much as you can and get that out because that actually helps hold the sealant there and uh, keep it lasting. And I also recommend, if you're gonna do it again, don't cheap out on this. You're already spending how much money? Spend the $15, buy Toyota FIPG. This stuff really, really freaking works, and it'll make your car look like new again. I live inside my own world of make-believe Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watch me weep I love everything Fire spreading all around my room My world's so bright It's hard to breathe But that's alright Hush Guys, before we go any further here, I wanted to give you the part number for the little strainer. The, this is the seal that goes right in this area here. That's the part number there. See if you can see that. All right, guys. So the pans are all on. The only thing I haven't put on is a lower oil pan. And I'll explain here in a second. Explain. Ex explain here in a second. Good Lord, Brian. Can you learn how to talk? So everything's back together. Uh, torque down to 15 foot-pounds for these. It is 29, or I did 30, one pound over. Uh, these, I believe, are supposed to be torqued down to like nine or 10 foot-pounds. Very, very low, same with these and the rest. Uh, and the lower oil pan's the same thing. It's like nine or 10 foot-pounds. Um, that's up to you. Some people just crank them. I uh, just crank these, which I probably overdid them some, but I don't want them coming loose. Um, the only reason I haven't put the lower oil pan on is the one I have, 
They must have busted up at one time, and you see where they welded it. And could I try putting it on? Sure. Am I going to test it? Hell fucking no. I'm just gonna put a brand new pan on it. Um, I've got one coming right now. So I'll put that on and that's pretty easy. Uh, I went ahead and also put the level oil level sender in here. Uh, oil level I should say. So clean that up some, put some stainless steel bolts in it because I have so many of them. Uh, so I threw some stainless steel bolts. I didn't even use washers just because that's something you put in and never have to worry about. Um, you can see that I put maybe a little too much FIPG around the actual oil pickup, but I'd rather be safe than sorry there, especially because of high pressure. Remember to put that O-ring in there. Um, the other day I went ahead and put in this to, again, use some stainless hardware just because, well, I have it. So next up, I think I'm just gonna flip the motor back over, and then I'm gonna start going over what I need to do to get ready for powder coat, clean up some of these parts that need to go back on the motor, um, so on and so forth. Again, I still have the uh, ABS pump here if anyone is actually interested in that. Some other random parts, if you see anything in this besides the AC lines, let me know if there's anything you see that you want. Just shoot me a message um, down in the comments or preferably on Instagram. Uh, I do get on Facebook too, but Instagram's kind of my main squeeze. One other thing I wanted to mention besides, you know, a nice Mick Ultra is these cam gears here, right? So I could put them back on, right? I'm ready to go. But Night Run Garage said that they are going to offer a new service where they rebuild these. So they're going to actually rebuild them. And if you actually know there is some O-ring seals, or I believe there's two O-ring seals, don't quote me on that. I'm actually speak with Night Run when I especially want to get them back. What they do is they rebuild it, you send it to them, they rebuild it. And then on top of it, they Cerakote it in this like cool gray color. So I'll show you guys that when it's all said and done. It's going to be pretty trick, I think. Um, it's going to look really nice. Cat's car is going to be way nicer than mine, which is very ironic. So I'm going to send those off. Again, I can't thank Chris and Ben down there. Uh, those guys are extremely, extremely nice. If you guys want to, go check down below. Uh, they're probably one of, the, one of my biggest supporters, along with Kazan Motorsports, uh, Odyssey Battery, and Modesta, of course. we got a big old Modesta up there. Those guys are probably my biggest supporters. Um, they've been with me from the get-go, back when I had barely had any subscribers, and I stay very true to them because they, well, they take very good care of me, and I take care of the people that take care of me. Oh, well, I did finally get a little oil pan, guys. It's a little after the fact, but you can see it's a brand new oil pan here. Do I have the stickers still on it too? Yeah, so let's see if we can get that focused here. What if I do it the right way, maybe? So that's the part number for the new lower oil pan. It's a metal pan. It already comes painted black and stuff, uh, but it doesn't come with a new fitting here. Uh, so if you need one of those, I went ahead and bought a new one. And then you, you get new O-rings every time you buy a Toyota Gasket or a Toyota um, oil filter, so you don't have to worry about that. But I went ahead and put a new factory bolt in. I guess I could have used magnetic, but I just bought a new factory bolt just because it was cheap and why not? Uh, and it's factory. But as you guys can see, for the most part, a lot of part of the motor has been put back together now, which uh, you've guys seen in some other videos there. I did go ahead and I've got the water pump on now. I've got the alternator, which I stole that from uh, the old motor. Uh, which is there. So I've got the NA hard line on it too. Had that welded shut. Um, there's a piece that comes off here. Had it welded shut. I don't run any coolant at all to the other side of the motor. You guys can see here, none. Block it off there, which I showed you guys in the last video. Use the NA uh, oil filter housing, which you could really use your TT. There's just a little cartridge here uh, that actually has coolant going through it. And what you gotta do is literally spin that cartridge piece off and it looks just like this. It's literally no different at all. Um, so you can just do that to make yourself a little, your life a little bit easier. If my camera would focus, that'd be awesome too. Uh, but for the most part, it's getting there. I'm still waiting for my cam gears and I'll show you guys how to time the motor and get that all set up and synced. That'll be a fun one for everyone to watch. Uh, I also got to show you guys, you got to notch out this piece. If you could see here, this doesn't line up perfectly. There's a little bolt hole back here. It's like a little bolt hole back here. This bolt hole doesn't line up anymore just because this isn't designed to work with this water pump and stuff. It just isn't. Uh, so you kind of have to cut it and I kind of bend it down some. It's definitely interesting. Uh, it's not perfect, but it works. I have it on my uh, current motor setup. So or my engine setup, I should say. And it's worked fine for the last whatever, five, six years. So just an idea for you guys. And then lastly here, uh, I'm hoping to take these up tomorrow uh, to my powder coater, Brad Decker. Um, he's based out of like Chambersburg-ish area. Um, just a bunch of random stuff. We've got some of the, these are actually the plates. One's for the AC, the other one was for the heater core hoses. They were a little beat up and stuff and it's starting to rust. So I figured uh, get these powder coated, not painted just because that'll keep them from ever rusting again. And the rest I just get powder coated because it's stuff that's touched and tools touch it and scrapes it up. Um, try to get this as smooth as possible. My goal is this has like a rougher cast to it. 
I want to see if he can put it on thick enough that it looks smooth when done. I'm going to have him clean up some of the welds too so it looks prettier. Um, try to get it cleaned up as best as possible. This doesn't matter here because you'll never see that. That I knocked off because on, on these manifolds there's this giant tab that sticks off that's ugly, which I don't like, but it stuck out to like here, so I at least knocked that off. Just dumb little things. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I'll take those up once I get the rear brakes. I'm not going to mess with those now. Plus, they'll be a totally different color, so it doesn't matter. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for now, guys. That's where we're at. In the next video, we'll be going over uh, disassembling the body and all that stuff. I know it's, you can tell it's already been pulled apart, but I'm going to show you how I pulled apart what we had to do. I'm just kind of doing this a hodgepodge like I can. I work a full-time job, so this makes this a little hard. Uh, I was talking to Wade Hill. If you know who Wade Hill is, he's pretty much like a welding genius. He works for T1 Race Development. And I just, when we were talking there through Facebook, of course, it was nice to actually finally meet him face to face. Um, it's hard, man, to work a full time job, come home, do this. Now I gotta go inside and do bills here and stuff. And then I gotta go run up to Chambersburg again, uh, which is like a half an hour from me, but it's just such a constant pace of running around. And my work's an hour and a half from me too. So three hours just driving to work, plus an AR day, which is sure, I'm not complaining. It's just, this is a lot and I love it though at the same time. So I hope you guys appreciate it I know these views aren't very good anymore, but I enjoy doing this versus stuff I don't enjoy and that was the whole point of YouTube for me I'm making videos that I like making so it works out for me. So on that note guys. Thank you very much um, If there's anything you'd like to know I've got some random stuff laying around if you see anything in here If you have questions or concerns about let me know and uh, I'll talk to you later. Peace